Good evening. Welcome to ASAL Community Church, where serving and giving begins. We look to the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who demonstrated the greatest example of service and sacrifice. We believe by following his example, we can unlock the abundance of this life and be assured about our glorious, boundless future. As we gather here today, we acknowledge the power of the triune God. We offer sincere praises to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We worship and adore the maker of the heavens and earth. We indeed collectively affirm. We desire godly change in our lives. We're expecting God to meet us here in a mighty way. We're determined to lead this place wiser, stronger, more joyful, and equipped with biblical truth to help us conquer the week ahead. We expect God's best, leaning on him for daily direction and resolving to renew our minds and surrender our hearts through his word. We long to understand the true posture of worship, the power of earnest praise, and the blessing of hearing the word and applying it to our lives. As we look around, we realize that serving the Lord is not confined to these walls. God gathers us here for instruction, but sends us out to share the message of reconciliation. Acceptance of the shed blood of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection are essential to abundance in this life and the next. We are here to win souls for Christ. Encourage those who do not know him personally and build up believers to accept Christ's call and live a purpose-filled life. Everyone is welcome here at ASAL Community Church where serving and giving begins. something about the blood. Strength from 
someday today it will never never lose never lose its power oh it reaches the blood that gives me strength from day day oh, it will never never lose never lose its power oh the blood that Jesus Shed for me way back on Calvary. I know it was the blood that gives me strength. This evening, let us share the Lord's Supper together. It is an experience because of the depth it represents. On the eve of his death, Jesus instituted a significant new fellowship meal that we observe to this day. It is part of our Christian worship. This is a remembrance of what Christ did for us and a celebration of what we received as a result of his sacrifice. Why don't you take a moment to examine your worship, your relationship with Christ, and your relationship with each other. Look at what's going on in our society and see how it convicts your heart to be that example that Jesus Christ died for, for us to represent. So I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Let us pray. Our Father, which is in heaven, we thank thee. We praise thee for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross for our sins. We don't come to your table trusting in our own righteousness, we are thankful for grace, we are thankful for mercy, and we ask that you forgive us for our transgressions, cleanse our hearts, renew our minds, and fill us with your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 24 reads, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In that same book, 
same chapter, verses 25 to 26 reads, in the same way also the cup, after supper, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink together. Amen. was the blood that gave me strength from day to day it will never never lose never lose never lose its power oh yeah it reaches to the lowest and it flows to the lowest, lowest valley. Oh, yeah. I know it was the blood that gives me strength from day. It will never, never lose. Never, never lose. It will never, never lose. Never lose its power. Never lose its power. It will never, never lose its power. Never, never, never lose its power. Never lose, never lose, never lose its power. Anybody know something about the blood? It will never lose. It will never, never, never lose. It will never, never lose. It will never, never, never lose. It will never, 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 never lose. It will never, never lose. It will never lose Never, 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 never lose It will never I don't care where you are It will never I don't care what your problem is Lord, it will never it will never lose. I lose. He brought us another first Saturday. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? Y'all talk back with me now. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? He's so good.
call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are. Holy you be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I call you righteous. Your name is righteous. You are so righteous to me. I call you right, your name is right, right as you are, and right as you be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I call you awesome, I call you awesome, your name is awesome, you have been awesome to me. I call you awesome, your name is awesome. Awesome you are, and awesome you be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. You have been faithful to me. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. Faithful you are, and faithful you be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I call you a healer. Your name is a healer. You are a healer to me. I call you healer. Your name is healer. Healer you are and a healer you be. Yeah. Hey, yeah. call you all that your name is all that you have been all that to me I call you all that your name is all that all that you are and all that you be yeah I said yeah can you see yeah can you see yeah can you see, yeah? Can you see, yeah? My soul says yes, yes, yes. My soul says yeah, yeah. My soul, my soul says yeah, yeah, yeah. My soul says yeah. Great and mighty is our God. Can y'all say that? Great and mighty is our God. You say. Great and mighty is our God. Say. A little bit louder. Great and mighty is our God. Say. Great and mighty is our God, say. Oh, great and mighty is our God, yeah. Nobody like, nobody like, nobody like, nobody like, nobody like, nobody like, nobody like him, no. Nobody like him, not my mother, not my father. Nobody like him, nobody like him, nobody like him, nobody like him. No, 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 nobody like him, nobody like him, nobody like him, nobody like him, not my mother. Not my father, nobody like him, nobody like him, oh, 
great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Not my mother. Not my father. No, 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 no. Not the preacher. Not the teacher. Not the doctors. Not the lawyers. Nobody like him. No, 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 no. Great and mighty is our God. Great and mighty is our God. No, no. Great and mighty is our God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Great and mighty, great and mighty, great and mighty. Nobody like him. 
Jesus. There's not a name you can call in your hour of need that will come through for you like the name of Jesus. How excellent is his name. How excellent is his name. Father God, we're thankful for another opportunity to still be in the land of the living, being able to move and think in our right minds. We're thankful, Father, for, for your grace and your mercy. We're thankful, not because we have been so good, but because of you, because it's your will that we are trying to live up to and we're trying to do all that you have called and assigned us to do. We're thankful, Father, for this body of believers. We're thankful that they will come out and worship you in spirit and truth. And for those who are watching online, we pray that this service has thus far moved you and opened your mind and your heart to receive a word from the Lord that your tomorrow may be better than your today. Bless us now, Father, this word as we go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. And I'm so thankful for another opportunity to bring the word of God to the people of God here at Asar Community Church where serving and giving begin. I'm thankful for the members who are here. I'm thankful for the friends who are here. I'm thankful for those who are watching online. And I'm thankful for the musicians that God has sent our way under Mr. Teddy Wright and Mr. Gerard Black. Thank you, gentlemen, for what you bring to our ministry to prepare our hearts to receive a word because I like music, because I believe that music ushers in the atmosphere to receive the word, but it's that substance of the word that's going to bring you through, and I'm so thankful. And I'm especially thankful to have Sister Terrell Wright here, who preached for us on last Saturday. So thank you for your diligence in the word and bringing the word to the people of God. And I'm also thankful for LaDonna, who reads our welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And to my wife, thank you. Uh, we had some movement things happening or some, some minor issues, but she handled it to allow me to continue to focus on what my assignment is. So thank you all. Thank you all. And we also want to have a special prayer for Roger and Gloria. They are traveling this weekend. Uh, another family member uh, has gone to be with the Lord, and they are there in support of that. So we're thankful. We're thankful. God bless you. Well, uh, two things uh, you can be assured of here at Asaw Community Church is a song and a word. And I just believe that. And I believe those two things are powerful in itself because that's truly what we do. We worship God in spirit and in truth. And we want to hear a word to do what? To impact our lives and move forward. So I'm so thankful that God has given me a word. And I'm telling you right now, um, this particular sermon I may preach two or three weeks in a row same verse because I believe it's just that much information and I asked the Lord I said give me a sermon that I can preach three times and let the Holy Spirit move in a direction each time because these verses talk if you're listening the verses talk if, if, if you're listening if you're listening they talk they talk to you they talk to your spirit they, they comfort you there's, there's something about the word of God no other book can say it has all the answers no other book can give you a direction no other book can give you a blueprint to success and to glory but the Bible and so I'm so thankful that God has, 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 has called me for this assignment to preach a word to the people of God in a time that the word is needed daily. The word is needed daily. I'm going to do some things a little bit different tonight because I just believe that's what the Holy Spirit wants. The title of my sermon is Let the Sparks Fly. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the title. Let, let the sparks fly. Let, let the sparks 
fly. Now, if you know me, you know I love a good debate. I love a good challenge. I love a good discussion because I believe it brings out not only truth, but growth. And growth comes from truth. There's no need for you to try to figure out what's going on or what's wrong in your life when there are people who are watching who will give you truth. And you can always tell when it's truth because as soon as you hear it, you, 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 people tend to do certain things when they hear truth. The first thing they do is when they hear truth coming from somebody, they want to then turn it right back to that person and tell them a truth about themselves. Or, or they will go to some default answer from the past. Here it is, you 40 years old, and you still telling me what happened to you when you was 12. At some point, got to let it go. Got to let it go. At some, at some point, at some point, there, there's some things I'm experiencing at 57 that I thought about at 17, but I, I'm not 17. I, I, I declare sometimes I, I, I see things and, 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 and I challenge myself not to say certain things at certain times because people think that you're judgmental when you see some things, but all I'm trying to do is allow you to avoid that pitfall because I, I saw that before. I, I saw that. I know the outcome of of this but 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 people for some reason have to go through it themselves and and, and so let let, let 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 the sparks fly well where would where, where would a sermon come from entitled let the sparks fly well I'm so glad you asked it's coming from Proverbs 27 17 we we wear the shirt this is one of the first shirts my wife designed for us iron sharp and iron and I wore it with pride and people would always see me say I like that and, and then I it dawned on me I I really did not understand what I was wearing I mean technically I did I mean iron sharp as iron and we all have when we hear that we kind of uh, have an image in our head of what it means but, but I wanted to have a definitive answer to impact someone's life of what, what is in Proverbs 27 17 one verse one verse how can you take one verse and turn that into two or, or three sermons well I can't but the Lord can if he see fit, if he, if he see fits, depending on how we progress tonight. But let's look at what it says. In, 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 in chapter 27, verse 17, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. And there are many different versions of Scripture. And, and so I, I said, well, let me just check out some other ones. And let, me, let me just see if they stay in the same vein. And, and the New Living Translation says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. The NIV says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So I said, well, they're, they're, they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar. So I said, well, let, what is this iron? What, 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 is, what, is, what is in this Proverbs? And, 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 and how does it really interact with each other? And how can it impact someone's life? Well, you have to understand there's a method to sharpening iron. And if you want to sharpen something, you, 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 you rub it up against something that has the same substance. And, and so, so if you were sharpening a knife, there would be a, a wheel that would spin and you would take your knife and put on that wheel and from the two touching, the knife will become sharper, but then you would see sparks. Let, let the sparks fly. Yeah. But, but guess what you never hear someone complain about? Being burned by the sparks. There's something about the sparks. They don't burn you. They, 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 they illuminate the night. They, they, there's something exciting about it, but, but it does not burn you. You, you have to understand the, the strength of iron. And, and you got to understand your, your strength. And you got to understand your, your testimony and your knowledge of the word because as you walk on this journey, you are iron. You are iron. And so when the two scrape against each other, both sharpen each other differently. Because that wheel sharpens the knife. But that wheel is sharp because it understands its function. So you got to understand your function in the relationship with other people. 
That, that's how you sharpen each other. Like a mother to a daughter or a father to a son or, or, or a seasoned musician with a young musician. There, there, there's a, there's a, a relationship that comes from the strength of who you are and what you have been through to be iron. So if they come together, if we bring them together, this, this produces a constructive level of conflict that produces a sharp outcome. Why, why do you say it produces a sharp outcome? Because we're going to be talking about sharpens, iron, and continents, and how they all interact with each other to be effective. But the outcome comes from the constructiveness of the, the conversations or the thoughts or whatever it is in that relationship comes out of that comes strength. But every time you face somebody about something or you try to share something, what comes next? Conflict. It's never simple. Even if you watch a, 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 metal, a metal worker make a sword, he has to put the sword in the fire and then take a hammer and pound it into the, to, to, into the, um, the object he's trying to create. So look at what's happening to make that. Fire, painful. Hitting, painful. And you expect our conversations not to produce any type of sparks? Because you don't want to be critical or, or criticized or counseled or led or given information. None of those things. Listen, all of those things equal your growth. Listen, I can't be here if I don't listen to y'all. I can't be here if I don't listen to the ones who have gone before me. All of this comes from listening to people who have already been sharpened by other objects who then brought the same sharpness to me. So when they say Esau is a blessing, I go, yes, it is. And here's the list of why. Dr. Larry Edmonds, Dr. Nathaniel Johnson. See, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that, have, hey, Dr. Joseph Matoya, uh, uh, Dr. Calvin Tibbs, Reverend Sappho. There's a lot of people that I rubbed up against to get to this position. And I was not afraid to open my ears and my mind to listen to what they said was necessary. Why? Because iron sharpens. Sharp as iron. And you got to have that in your life because it's imperative to grow. So there must be a level of challenges and questions in one's life. And if you have shut your mind down to challenges and information, then you're on an island. And that's why so many families are in peril. Because the leader is on an island and refuses to hear anything other than their own thoughts. Oh, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. If, if, if we want to be honest, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's a lot. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of leaders ain't listening because they don't want to be challenged. And I'm telling you that if you don't want to be challenged, no growth is coming your way. Only time growth comes is when you're challenged. Hey, 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 he can play that organ, but, but, but there's some people that can call, come to him and say, hey, hey, how do I get that chord changed to work? And he said, well, this is how you do it. And it's going to be challenging for them because they, they've never done it. You, you, you understand? You, there's no growth. And the ministry is dying because y'all are afraid to say, I don't know that. Can you help me? Can you show me that? What can I do to be better? You ain't got it together. I ain't got it together. I got to keep pressing and I got to keep praying. Why? Because I want to be iron. And when I talk to other new church plants, I want to tell them my experience. I want to tell them my journey. I'm going to say, hey, man, here's some pitfalls you can avoid. Why? Because we shouldn't be afraid to open up and share what God has blessed us to have. How dare you? Iron is strong. And it's not easily bent. But yet I say one thing to you and you crumble. All the knowledge you say you have of the Lord, I can't say one thing to you. I can't point you in this or that direction, but you say, I love the Lord. He's my savior. He's my help. He's my wheel in the middle of the wheel. But the moment someone gives you one 
iron is strong and it's not easily bent. And guess what else what iron is? It is molded into whatever it's going to produce. Thank you. That's what it's done. It's molded. How do you mold something? It has to have someone with the knowledge to point it and to bend it and to do whatever it is to make it become whatever it is, that, whether it's a sword or a knife, whatever it is, it has to be able to maneuver. It comes from liquid to solid. So if you're going to be effective in this ministry, you better, you better get solid real quick. So in order to grow, in order to change, guess what? You got to go through some things. I'm getting to this verse now. I told you this may take me a couple of weeks. Huh? I'm not going to rush it. Why? Because I'm telling you that if we, if we get this, if we, we understand this, we can not only be more effective, you know what we can also do? Be unified. Because you'll understand my responsibility and my role, and you'll understand yours. So in order to change, you got to go through the fire. But there's nothing wrong with going through the fire if you got a friend. There's nothing wrong with going through the fire if somebody is right there with you, sharpening with you. You know what the most powerful relationship on earth ought to be? Husband and wife. <laughs> I don't understand how you can talk to your husband on the, five, on the phone for five minutes and talk to your girlfriend for an hour and a half. I don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand how you can spend so much time with your boy and spend a few minutes with your children. I, I, I don't understand it. The most powerful relationship, the one that impacts your life, the one that moves your life forward, you should be able to spend as much time with that relationship. And you know who else relationship you ought to be able to spend a lot of time with? You ought to be spending a lot of time with God. Why? Because he impacts your life. And because of this impactfulness that we have, we have to be, have a willingness to share. To do what? To share. To do what? To share. Why? Why are we doing this? Because that's what Jesus would do. He would share. He would tell the truth. Because these things impact your lives and the lives of the hearer. And improves your life as well as others by your sharing. So iron sharpens iron. You know what it is? It's to improve other people's lives. Your life is not your own. Your life has been brought. So because of that, it is my duty. It is my obligation to do what? To share. It is my obligation, it's my duty, it's my responsibility, and it's what God would desire of all of us is to be vessels to be used for his glory. So the Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. So you got to understand this. You got to ask yourself, who are you sharpening up with? Who are you sharpening up with? Because whatever you sharpen up with, this is your outcome. I tell people all the time, you know, if Teddy go hang out with me, we going home that night. Teddy go hang out with me, we going home. But I got some friends, if Teddy hang out with them, I don't know if he going to make it home. Because of their consciousness, the things that they're into, the activities that they're into. So you better, you got to figure out who you sharpen up with. You're looking at your road and why so many things are happening on your road. All you got to do is look at your circle and see wherever your circle is. That's where you're pretty much going. I, I, I'm not, I don't even think about jail. I don't even think about police. I don't think about hospitals. I don't think about those things because the circle that I'm traveling in, about the only thing we're going to do is have some indigestion. So, so let's, 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 let's look at this. Let's, let's look at this scripture and let's kind of begin to, to dissect it, to take it apart, to do what? To, to put this thing in a perspective so that it makes sense. Because what I don't ever want, I don't ever want, ever, ever, I don't ever want a person to open up the scripture and talk about everything the scripture. And, and it's happening. It, it, it's not just me. People are seeing it. It's, it's happening because they give you the scripture for, for I don't know, I don't know for I don't know for what, but they give it to you, and then they want to talk about everything 
else but that. I, I'm saying we can talk about everything. If everything leads to this and sets it up to this, we, we fine. And again, you can hoop it. You can sign language it. You can exergy it. You can, you, can, you can do whatever you want. You can send it by braille as long as it lines up. And as long as when a person walks out that door, they go, why did we turn there? Well, here's why we turn. I'm good. I'm good. We got to stop wasting time because it sounds good. It tantalizes my ear. Oh, some people know how to set it up. Why? Because that's part of whatever plan they have. Ain't got no plan. You know why I don't have a plan? This is why I don't have a plan because it's accountability that I'm worried about. It's responsibility that I live for. It's accountability because I got to answer to him, and it's a responsibility because it was entrusted in me. So I ain't got time to play. I got to tell you the truth, and I, I pray that you're mad when you hear the truth because one thing I know about the truth, eventually it comes back around. How do I know the truth comes back around? Because my daughter told me one day, Daddy, now I get it. My son told me one day, Daddy, now I understand it. You know why? Because that truth that I tried to share with him when they thought I was the mean dad is now reality, hitting them dead smack in the face. And now all of a sudden, it makes sense. And you know what I never did? I never wavered in what I believed was my iron, sharpening that iron. And that's why you can have independent kids and you get out of the way and let the truth lead them wherever road they choose to do. Just pray to God for to protect them and go on about your business. So it, so it says right here, as iron sharpens iron. So the word sharpen, let's just, just look at the word sharpen. In the Greek tra translation can mean, and this ain't me, this is just from studying, okay? Because I didn't know this. I just want y'all to know that. I don't want y'all to think, oh, that was profound. No, no, it comes from studying because you got to study to show what? That's self approved So the sharpen in the Greek translation can mean to urge or stimulate, but also to provoke or irritate. So as iron provokes, as iron irritates, it does what? It sharpens. What? Iron. You got to understand that when, when the Bible was written, it had all the answers. We got to just sit down and figure out what it means. So, so that word sharpen, it means to provoke. And so isn't that ironic that whenever you're in a relationship or you're having a conversation maybe with a spouse or your child or something, don't you feel like somebody's provoking you when they're telling you the truth about something? So guess what? That sharpening is actually right. That translation is right on. Because if I'm trying to tell you something that's going to correct some things so that you can grow, guess what happens? Just like those shrubs at my house, a cutting has to happen so growth can take off so guess what you're going to be provoked and you're going to be irritated and guess what it's good for your growth I don't care how they said it what did they say was it truthful does it make a difference yes and tomorrow will be better when you begin to understand that it's just to sharpen you so, so, so again the word sharpen means to provoke or to irritate or urge or stimulate Hence, hence the title, Let the Sparks Fly, because they are, they are. You know it, and I know it. They gonna fly. Why? Because we don't know how strong we really are. When you really know who you are, and you are equipped to handle, handle the battle, because we all said, oh, Lord, put me on the battlefield. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, sound good. But then when you get there, because you got to be prepared, you got to go through some stuff. So what happens when two metals brush up against each other? Sparks fly, heat is created, and change comes. That piece of raw metal that that metal worker is pounding changes into something else. It could be something peaceful. It could be a building, because that's where metal comes from, iron comes from, from, for construction. It could be so many things, but it changes. Why? Because of the heat. Got to be able to take some heat, people. I'm talking about you Bible study, Bible knowledge, man. Listen here. The ones I have found in my life who profess to know the most crumble quicker than the one who just trying. Every, every war movie you ever saw, 
when they was in basic training, you would see them talking trash in basic training, and you would think they would be the super, super soldier, and then there was one that was scared, just scared, just scared out of his mind. And then they go into battle, and the one that you thought was going to lead the charge is now crumbling, crying, and the one that you thought wasn't going to do nothing is leading the way. Why? It's because of that training and that development. And then when they got into battle, because they were fearful, they paid attention. See, arrogance don't pay attention because arrogance think they got it all together. So again, iron sharpens iron. And nothing can be sharpened if it ain't against nothing. And that's why so many families are jacked up because the leader ain't sharp and he ain't sharpening against nothing. So therefore, he's dull and women find themselves in peril. They do. They do. They do. Why, 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 why are women in, in these situations? Because there's no accountability. Because when you don't have nobody to rub up against, there's no accountability. I told y'all in some sermons, I don't know, a while back, all you got to do is look at a man's uh, 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 recent call history, and if you don't see no men in there, he is it. I know on my call history the names of the men that I talk to on the regular basis. Why? Because I need them. And they give me an infusion of information to go to move forward. You can't be the smartest one in the camp. Because if you're the smartest one in the camp, you're the only one in the camp. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. I ain't, I ain't trying to I ain't trying to get nobody divorced, and I ain't trying to get no husband talking about you've been talking to my wife. No, this is across the world. This ain't just you. It's across the world. People are dying because you don't want nobody to tell you nothing. You can't take no information. You ain't given no information. Your children are suffering. Your wife is suffering. Your community is suffering. Your church is suffering. How, how, how do I know? Because people are afraid to tell the truth because they don't want the sparks to fly. And I don't mind sparks flying because the truth that I'm giving you is the word of God. I ain't making it up. I can't take no credit for this. Even when my daughter said to me two weeks ago, Daddy, you were right. I said, I couldn't take credit for being right because all I did was give her the word of God. Those in your circle have to help you rub off the hard edges. Friction, sharpening, how, how, how do we do this? How do we do this? Well, if it's iron versus sharpens iron, and, and, we're, and we're sharp, okay, then it, it comes from the conversations. And some of them may seem uh, judgmental. Some of them may seem harsh. But if you know the person that you're dealing with, and their care, and their concerns, and their wants, that's, that's best for you then you just got to realize that you just got to grow. I mean, it's nothing hard about it. It's, it sounds simple. It does sound simple. It does sound simple. Change does sound simple. It's implemented that's difficult. Because to implement it means I got to change, meaning people start feeling like they ain't worthy or they this, this, this. They ain't got nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with to be better. To be better. I told y'all, when I started out as a comic, I wanted to be like Eddie Murphy. I was up there cussing. Like, because that's what I saw. And then the guy pulled me to the side and said, hey, man, listen, people like you. You have a natural presence. If you just find some material that relates to you and stop all that cussing, I think you'll go far. 35 years later, I'm still here. Why? Because, it, it, you know what my buddy said? You know what my buddy said? He was right there. After the guy told us, you know, because he, he told us, because we was young in the comedy, so he had to give everybody the, the feedback. And, and then my boy said, man, don't let nobody tell you how to do your comedy, man. That's you. That's your voice. And 35 years later, I'm still performing. He's driving a truck. Why? Because I heard a truth. I didn't like it when I heard it because I thought I was doing a good job. But somebody with experience, somebody with wisdom saw something deeper than what I could even conceive of and said, listen, you don't have to do that. Iron sharpens iron. And the reason why it's sharp is because in everybody's life, including mine, me, I'm just, I don't know about yours, but mine, there's vulnerabilities. And you need people to help you. 
and point some things out that can fix whatever it is we're discussing. That's, that's, that's all it is. That's all it is. You ain't The reason why so many people are stuck, there's people stuck. There's people walking around, they're stuck. And the reason why they're stuck is because there's, there's no influence, there's, no, there's nobody rubbing up against them, there's no conversation, there's no challenge, there's, no, there's nothing, they're stuck and they can't get unstuck because most people who are stuck don't want to know what is what's required to get unstuck. So they live in stuck and you are stuck because you're trying to tell them, but they, it's, just, it's a stuck mess. And then y'all walk around waiting and depending on people who don't even care about you to pass some type of legislation to change your outcome. What the heck is wrong with you? They don't, they don't care about you. They all got, got their own agenda. Ain't a broke congressman in the world. Ain't a broke one. And they don't care what they pass as long as they're voters I don't care what they believe, they ain't gonna listen to no truth. They're gonna, believe, they're gonna listen to whatever gets the agenda moved in the direction that's favorable to them. And you think that appeases you? Man, the word of God said, look here, man, do what you're supposed to do in society, but, 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 but your mind ain't even part. I know where it comes from for me. So, 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 so it, it, it works if we allow people to do what? Sharpen us. Cause, cause there's, cause there's, cause there's more, there's more to it. You gotta understand, whatever you hear, it goes through whether or not you trust and respect who share it. Think about it. Whatever you hear, it goes through this filter. Who, who's telling me that? And the moment you hear something, the first thing you do is you judge who's telling you, and then you say to yourself, "Well, they can't tell me nothing based upon what you think they are." I told y'all, I was walking through Washington, D.C., it was cold, and there was a homeless man outside, and he was in a garbage bag, and he asked me for a couple of dollars, and I said, I don't have it. And I said, but if I, if I could give you my coat, because uh, you could be warm, because you're in the plastic bag. And he said, boy, you dumb. You don't even understand. I'm warmer than you. I said, how can you be warmer than you? Because I got a coat on, and I'm cold. He said, because plastic has no pores, and the body gives off its own heat. So because I got this plastic bag on, all the heat my body giving off keeps me warm. I learned something from a homeless man man in D.C. on 20th and K. And most people would have walked past him thinking he don't know what he's talking about. He's homeless, but that brother was right. Why? Because he was iron. And you'd be dumb to walk past him and not take that information into consideration the next time it's cold. So iron sharpens iron. It does. It sharpens. It sharpens. It sharpens. So for iron to sharpen iron, it occurs because of the what? The striking, the friction, and the sparks. That's what it does. That's what it does. So you got to understand in your life that if, if you want to you wanna grow, you got you to gotta realize who you are, and you got to realize who you sharpen it up against. I, that, that, that's, that's, that, that, it's, doesn't it sound so simple? You just got to look at who you were, you were dealing with. You got you to gotta look at what's going on in your life. You got to look at where you want your life to be. You got to look at where you want to be. You got to look at who you represent. You got to look at who they represent. You got to look at what God is doing. You got to look at what God has done, and then you got to take all of them and Put them into what? Your journey, into your path. Why? To be effective. Why? Because that's what we are called to do. We are called to be effective witnesses for the gospel. You can't look like them and act like them and expect them to, to come on and be a part of this team. You got to separate yourself. So how dare you be afraid to hear what the word of God says about the things that you're doing or what you should be doing or what you should have done and how to improve, how to get better. All of it is in the word of God. This is the beautiful thing. So let the sparks fly. Why? Because whenever iron sharpens iron, there's going to be some sparks. There's going to be some heat. It's going to be some friction. But there's going to be change. And what we're moving for and growing for is for the growth and the change that must take place for you to be effective in ministry. 
So if you want to be effective, you got to understand, we got to rub up against some people who've already gone in front of us who don't have no problem looking back and telling you it's going to be all right after a while and by and by. I know it's going to be all right. Why? Because I'm not afraid to call people who I know who are iron and say, look, at this is the hand I'm playing. How would you play? Well, let me tell you what the Lord would have done. Let me tell you what the Lord would do. And I say, receive. Why? Because I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to be better and I'm trying to lead people to a relationship that they can depend on God so I can sleep at night. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. I told you I, wasn't, I knew I wasn't going to get through. I knew I wasn't going to get through. Why? Because it's important for you to understand who you are. It's important. It's important for you to understand that you're iron, you're iron, you're iron, you're iron, you're iron, you're iron, I'm iron. And together, we got to do this. That's why, that's why Tuesday Town Hall is so powerful to me. Because everybody gets to be iron. And everybody else gets to listen and sharpen up. And if you're missing it, you're missing it. You can figure, you, whatever the reasons are, that's, that's on you. But I'm telling you, you're missing it. How, how do you know you're missing it? Because people tell me that was a blessing. Terrell taught. Robin taught. And LaDonna is teaching. Why? Because they are. Everybody got something to say. You got something to say. You got a class. You got a class. You got a class. You got a class. Everybody got a class. Even Gerard has a class. But you got to not be afraid to share it. you got to not be afraid because we are called to be there. The doors of the church are open here at ASAR Community Church. Being a member is simple. Why is everything simple? Because God wanted it that way. I've had people in the last couple of weeks talk about the time limit that I give preachers to preach. I ain't changing it. Until he says change it. I ain't changing it. And the reason why I'm not changing it is because he's the one who gave me the instructions. He's the one that had me over at Church at Chapel Hill. And I said, Lord, why am I here? Because I don't know if you know Pastor Dave, but if you know Pastor Dave, I know for a fact when that man opens the book and gives you a scripture, he teaches it for 30 minutes and he sits down. And the Lord says, hey, hey, you was over there. You was over there. You know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Why? He tells you why you're turning, and he tells you about it. He teaches you something, and you go home. So, yeah, so, so you know, if you got a problem with time, you know, you ain't got to go long. I say up to. I watched the preacher preach a message at the National Baptist for seven minutes and wreck the whole conference. <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> One word. So the doors of the church open. Why? Because you should be a part of a body of a believer that so you can rub up against. Yeah, that, that's, that's it. That's it. And, and, and harmony and unity. So boom. Want to be a member? All you got to do is fill out this card. I don't make it difficult. You know why it's not difficult? Because salvation is very simple. All you got to do is say, Lord, Jesus, I, I believe you died for me. Come into my heart. How simple is that? You ain't got to take no test. You ain't got to take no class. You ain't got to come on no Christian, no Christian experience. You ain't got to be no certain denomination. You ain't got to be no weight. You ain't got to be no color. All you got to do is ask. So here, f fill this out. If you want to be a member, Tuesday Town Hall is every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. This week, I will be out of town again, uh, and LaDonna will be teaching. We'll be online. Lord willing, when I come back, I'll be home for several weeks, and, and we'll be here for Tuesday Town Hall. But it's a place for you to sharpen with other minds about things that you think about. When it comes to giving here at ASAR Community Church, I think we, got, we have a great way of sharing uh, what you should give. <laughs> Whatever you decide that you want to give to your Lord that he has blessed you to have. That's it. That's it. You can call it what you want. I could turn to some scriptures, but guess what? Everybody knows they're supposed to give. Everybody. There's not a person who does not know they're supposed to give. If you don't think you're supposed to give, call me. We'll talk about it. But everybody knows. Everybody knows they're supposed to give. Now, they have reasons why they do or they don't. That's between you and the Lord. I, I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm telling you what we do here. 
The monies that you put in here goes back to take care of the ministry here and the ministries that we support throughout the community. We support ministry. Why? Because that's what the money's supposed to do. So the money comes in and the money goes out. Why? We support people. We, we bless folks. We have people who operate. We have people who do work for us and we bless them. Why? Because we don't ever want to do nothing for free because the moment you do something for free and the moment you need something and it don't come your way, you'll say, all those times I did X, Y, and Z for free. So we don't have that. And we don't have to have that because the people who sold into ASA give. So you can go right here, asawcc.org, or you can place it in envelopes and place it in the container. Why? Because God has blessed you to have it. All belongs to him. All he says is give me back a portion. And he, 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 didn't, he didn't put any dollar amount on it. In fact, Jesus said the woman who gave the two bits gave more than everyone because she did what? She gave from her heart. So give from your heart and be blessed. That's it. That's it. That's it for the church. That's it for the service this evening. We're blessed. That's what the song is. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed when we come. We're blessed when we go. Father God, I thank you for the preached word. And we're going to continue this next week and maybe the week after that. I pray that this message hit home, not only in your mind, but in your heart. Bless us now, Father, as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.